So a few days ago, I put out a video showing this uh, Kabbalistic rabbi, Michael Lightman, and he makes this statement. If you don't have the vessels, you don't recognize anything on the outside. How do I build a vessel inside of me if I don't know what something is on the outside of me? I need somebody to tell me about it. There's no other way. That's why the Kabbalistic sages write books for you, for us. And according to these books, you start imagining what's out there. And from this imagination, slowly you build patterns and some kinds of shapes in your mind. For sure, they're not correct, but slowly, by longing, by desire, you invite a light that is building shapes more and more close to what it is. And then you start reaching that point where you can actually see. The light is built within the vessel. And I just wanted to go back and expound upon that little section uh, a bit more because right there he actually is articulating what I think I've been trying to encapsulate in so much of what I've been coming to understand about the whole role of not just Copernican cosmology, but this whole idea of transcending limitation and going into space and all the mystic philosophy behind uh, cosmism and Russia and all of these pieces that when you put them together, you see how it really is. It really is doing the very thing that he describes right there. And if you understand what the occult agenda is, you understand the, the whole thing with Blavatsky and the externalization of the hierarchy, where it's this gradual, this gradual process of inculcating the entire world with the Luciferian belief system. You know, you know, more and more people are coming to understand this in some capacity or another. A part of that Luciferian belief system, I mean, it's a magical, I mean, it's a belief system that is based upon, you know, the principles of witchcraft and occultism. I mean, that's what mysticism leads to. And so an analogy I've been thinking of lately is like, like the game of Dungeons and Dragons, where in, in a way that's, it's this teaching tool where it teaches you about uh, magic and the occult, it, you start out by just thinking you're playing a, a game and you're role-playing. But in doing so, you start to learn all these concepts. You start to learn to think like a practicer of magic and sorcery, where you accumulate powers and potions and you learn how to cast spells and, you know, you sort of build your magical toolbox, as it were. But it starts by learning the concepts. And it's the same principle that we can apply towards so many things that are out there in the world just parading as materialistic science, when in fact these are very ancient occult beliefs that have now been passed through the filter of the scientific revolution, so they're not recognized as being occult concepts and occult beliefs, and embraced by the mainstream and even the Christian church. So it's a matter of building blocks. You know, Satan is, is a very patient, esoteric teacher, right? And that's essentially what we're talking about, is that it's an esoteric teaching that's been rolled out onto humanity as a whole over millennia. And um, having a conversation with Robbie from Celebrate Truth a little bit this morning, we were talking about this recent article from Answers in Genesis, and uh, started going through it and reading all these very poorly constructed arguments that he makes is this article written on Does the Bible Teach the Earth is Flat by Danny Faulkner, who of course has degrees in physics and astronomy, so he's a real he's a real unbiased character, of course. And I started doing a response and got about halfway through the article and just but at some point I think I just felt like it was it was almost a pointless endeavor. It, maybe I'll go back and, and do a more in depth um, rebuttal or whatever, but at the end of the day, you can just look and see, you just see the lengths that they're going to and making all these, these same self-contradictory arguments, basically reducing all the biblical, all the biblical instances which defy heliocentrism and writing them off as idiom and allegory and not to be taken literally. And this is, it's, uh, 
you know, this is biblical deconstructionism, right? And it's just sadly ironic because it's it's all the same tactics that the, you know, the, the atheists and the opponents of the Bible have already mastered <laughs> when it comes to attacking the creation account, when it comes to attacking the flood, when it comes to attacking the miracles of Jesus, and all, all the claims that the Bible makes that are contrary to science, you know, either you take it literally or you reduce it to a metaphor, metaphor and allegory and just as some sort of a, you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't take this two-faced position. And that's, I think, why they're really scrambling. And it's amazing that they're even writing articles like this. But it's, but after a while, it just made me kind of stop and realize that, you know, these people are so... Like I said, this guy has degrees and grad, he has graduate degrees in physics and astronomy. Danny Faulkner. He's taught at the University of South Carolina, Lancaster, for 26 years and a member of the Creation Research Society, which I had no idea there was a Creation Research Society. See, it's even to the degree now where it's like, okay, we have to have our own little society. You know, you're just mirroring things like the the Royal Society. I mean, these are organizations that were started by, you know, Rosicrucians and occultists and... <laughs> That's what a society, you know, all those, all those scientific societies and things. It's like, do you see what we're doing? And oblivious to the fact that, you know, without the Copernican universe, there's no evolution whatsoever. There's no Big Bang. And I think people are starting to see through this. Just they're really, the more they make these kinds of arguments, it's really working against them because I think a lot of people who are take take their Bible seriously see through it and it's like why 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 are they suddenly undercutting the very footing that they're trying to stand on but again we see this whole idea of all these concepts of space and apotheosis and transcendence and reaching for the stars and you know reaching our destiny and all these it's all part of the same narrative it's all the same propaganda and even when you look at pop culture and Hollywood and the movies and all the things associated with imaginings of space travel you can see all these connections uh, once again, and like I was saying, with this explanation given by the, the Kabbalist Michael Leitner, he's saying that the, the concepts have to be put in the mind. You need somebody to tell you. And what, we're, what it all comes back to is we're talking about these are spiritual concepts. These are spiritual teachings that are coming through the vessels of, of science, just like evolution. And if you understand what evolution is, and that it is ultimately a spiritual teaching, which on a surface on a surface level is just about, you know, biology and the physical materialistic world, but at its core it's a it's a spiritual message. Evolution is a spiritual belief. And it's it's crazy hearing Ken Ham continually I was just watching this interview where he's talking to this astronaut, this supposedly Christian a astronaut, astronaut Barry E. Wilmore and and I'm not going to play the video because apparently Ken Ham is not wanting people to use their copyrighted material. And uh, I will leave a link below, and you can go look at it yourself, where he's talking to astronaut Barry Wilmore. And a lot of interesting things in that, uh, in that interview, and coming out and like right off the bat, talking about how the Earth is round and not flat, and well, this is proof. And, you know, you just watch something like this, and it's such an example of how asleep the church is. And you see Ken Ham just talking about how the... The atheists and the atheists hate what we're doing and the atheists and, and it's just indicative of what of the mentality of so much of the church where they think what we're really battling against is atheism. And it's not atheism. Atheism is only sort of the veneer. It's only the outer layer. And the whole thing really illustrates why, you know, in order to be faithful to the scripture to this degree in the face of all this quote unquote, you know, evidence and testimony. You've got to be willing to go down the the conspiracy rabbit hole, right? Because we got guys like Jeff Williams and we got astronaut Barry Wilmore. And yeah, sure enough, go find some footage of him up on the ISS. And it's just more wire work, acrobatics. You know, it's playing to the camera. It's the same stuff. It's the same acting. But But here's like the sticking point. Because if Christians can't get past that point of... Yes, there's really an agenda going on where they are faking entire terrorist events. We just had another one going on in Sweden. Uh, this All this business with Syria and Trump, and it's all the same agenda, just marching on forward all according to the script. Okay, it's all being orchestrated. You, you know, the world that they think they live in does not exist. 
and this is just what troubles me so much when we see the world marching headlong towards, you know, the one world Luciferian system, the one world order, um, an occult order, the mystery Babylon religion. And yet we're trying to defend the Bible using astrophysics and Freemasonic NASA. That's how asleep the church is. That's how oblivious we are. That the world is owned by Satan. And they are believing his lie. The great deception has already been well underway for a long time. If you don't have the vessels, you don't recognize anything on the outside. How do I build a vessel inside of me if I don't know what something is on the outside of me? I need somebody to tell me about it. There's no other way. That's why the Kabbalistic sages write books for you, for us. And according to these books, you start imagining what's out there. And from this imagination, slowly you build patterns and some kinds of shapes in your mind. For sure, they're not correct. But slowly, by longing, by desire, you invite a light that is building shapes more and So a few days ago I put out a video showing this uh, Kabbalistic rabbi, Michael Lightman, and he makes this statement.